All right, today we're going to play a game that you probably never heard of. Uh, it's pretty old from the late 90s, and it's called The Robot Club. So the reason I was thinking about this game is I was trying to remember how I learned to program originally when I was about 10 years old, 8 to 12, something like that. And there were a couple of different ways in which I learned to program, uh, but this game was one of them. And I remember getting it from the local library back in the Netherlands where I grew, grew up. And I just got immediately hooked. It was super engaging and fun. And they had these scenes with real actors. And there was a compelling storyline. And you got to build robots, right? Like, what more do you want? So anyway, I was thinking about this game. And I started uh, searching online to see if there were other people that uh, used to play this game back in the day. And I couldn't really find anything. No one really mentioning it much or talking about the gameplay or anything like that so it was pretty surprising to me because uh, i enjoyed it so much and i learned a lot from it so um i, f I figured let's uh, let's see if it uh, if it's actually as good as i remembered it to be so i managed to uh, uh to get a copy at a ucd store and i started playing it in a, in a windows me uh virtual machine and so far I've only played a few levels, uh, but it's just as good as I remember it. So I figured I should just record me playing through it all uh, for historical preservation. And maybe um, someone who's working on programming education today can take some inspiration from it, from uh, what might be you know, a forgotten masterpiece. So we'll see if it holds up. We'll play through it all and uh, let's get started. All right, so I'll play it like this with me on the side here. And here we have our Windows ME uh, virtual machine. This is running in uh, VMware. Um, so yeah, let's uh, start up the program and uh, I'll shut up as it does the intro bits. LTI. All right, so here we have the splash page. Let me turn down my volume a little bit. It's a little loud for me. Okay, there we go. So we have a nice little microchip and a go button. So let's get going. Okay, so we can do a new game, but actually normally when you start the game for the first time, which I already did to, you know, kind of make sure that all the audio and so on works well, uh, so you would see the intro. So uh, let's do that first and I'll turn off my mic and we can uh, watch the, the intro together. And uh, to all of our new students, a reminder that if you haven't received a revised schedule, you should report immediately to your assigned homeroom and pick up your schedules there. If you're not sure where your homeroom is, just refer to the second page of your revised schedule and that'll tell you. Remember, if you're scheduled... Listen up. I'm telling you, something funny is going on in OmniScience, and I can't put my finger on it yet. Hey! How'd you get in here? Woody forgot to lock the door. How long have you been standing there? How much did you hear? You're going to turn us in, aren't you? Just look into my eyes, man. This is not the robot club. Advertise it, why don't you? Oh, please, no one's trying to find out who we are. Hey, I know you. You're that new kid in the neighborhood. Your parents work at OmniScience, don't they? What does that prove? Everyone's parents work at OmniScience. What should we do? Only members can know who we are. Well, seeing as you're here, I'm going to trust you with our secret. <gasps> We're the robot club. Whoa! Are you crazy? Maybe. But then, name me a great scientist that isn't. Busted. We're the ones who build those robots that do good stuff around town. That help people. That solve problems. Pretty cool, huh? Listen, the club isn't open to just anyone. If you want to join, you'll have to prove that you can make the grade by making our kind of robots. We want to keep the club a secret so we can build the robots we want to build. Not some dweeby project for some science teacher. You'll have to learn our programming language. We invented it. And you'll have to learn how all the different components can be put together. We'll start with a few training missions to get you up to speed. Then we'll give you some real challenges. If you can tackle those, you're in. Ruby? Well, okay. But I'm gonna keep 
keep my eye on you. That is one hairy eyeball. Ruby's all right. She's just deeply suspicious of people in general, and you in particular. Here, take this. Don't lose it, and don't let anyone see it. We'll be contacting you soon with the training missions. Good luck. Hope you make it. Hmm. But on. Maybe you'll be the next member of the robot club. Hmm. Oh, uh, it cracks me up every time. It's so good. Um, yeah, so that's uh, there's there's a lot of little uh, uh, scenes like that. Before we uh, jump into that, though, let's have a look at the credits, just so that we record that. So these are the people who made this uh, this cool thing. Oh yeah, 1997 it says here. Alright. Let's start a new game. JP. All right. There you are. We were hoping you wouldn't back out. Most of us were anyway. So harsh. There are six training missions. You can do them all, or if you think you're ready, just skip ahead to mission number seven and we'll give you the real deal, Carl. The training missions give you the basic steps to putting together a robot club robot. Back to you, Robin. Each mission comes with a brief you can use any time to help you out. Andrea? If you get stuck, look in the tips folder. Ooh. Are you ready? Get your robots rolling. All right, let's go. First mission. Oh, hi. My name's Robin, by the way. Your first training mission is really simple. Just get your robot to go to the flag. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> Short and sweet. Okay, and so then here, this little mission brief. It says uh, you can't lose. <laughs> You're comporting in the right direction to win. Make the robot touch the flag by moving forward. All right, well, that sounds like uh, there's not much that can go wrong here. Um, so there's two buttons here, one is the workshop and one is run program. And I've already figured out a little bit how this works. So it, here you have the workshop and then you have this uh, run program button again. It, uh, it kind of explains what you, how, how this thing works, this workshop. So I can take this thing and move it around and I should put it there. It's a nice little arrow. And yeah, you can save the current robot or uh, load something that you saved. And then there's a program button and it kind of like switches to this other side. And then here you can go back like this. Um, so then uh, let's do the new task like they say and we can give it a name. In this case, it's uh, we only have one task. So I'll just say one. It's a start task. And then we create a new instruction. And here it says, drag the threads onto the right hand side of the balloon. You're not really taking them off the robot, right? So yeah, it's teaching us a little bit about abstraction already, <laughs> right? Like this is the physical robot, but this is a representation of it. And then here we have to select this action. And so it says that the thread should go. And then we say, okay. And now we, uh, it tells us to run the program. So let's do that. Phew. And there it went, and it went straight for the flag. You're not bad. Hang in there, and I'll see you later, if you make it. Bye! <laughs> cool, yeah, so let's look at that UI again, just for a second, if I go to the workshop. Yeah, so we also have a button here to go back to the notebook, that's this thing. You can also run the program directly from here, but that's kind of pointless, because, you know, normally you don't have it programmed yet, but if I do that... Yeah, it goes here again, and I can just go back here. And we get this thing again, okay. Yeah, and so, and then usually there's a tutorial button where it has some tips. So in this case, it kind of, you know, it was very straightforward, but um, it, uh, it really spells it out for you if you, if you need it, if you, uh, if you get stuck somewhere. And that's pretty useful in some of the other levels. From what I remember, they, they get pretty complicated uh, at some point. You can even cut, copy, paste here. Um, yeah, so let's um, let's kind of how the UI works. So let's uh, let's go through all these missions. Green, my favorite color. La, 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 la. Except I don't like green kids. As in beginners, Ruby.
Ruby's the name. My training mission teaches you to use our color sensors, as in green or, say, yellow, so your robot can find the flags by itself. Go ahead, knock yourself out. I like how the how the color sensor has a big a big eye drawn on it. I think they should do that in real life. Um, <laughs> that way you know what what it is. Okay, so we take this thing and we take the color sensor. It even has like a little prism on top, I guess, to get like the color that you care about. And let's just run the program and kind of see what we have to do here even. Okay, so the flag is over there and the flag is yellow. So that's why we got the yellow sensor. So we create a new task again, this doesn't matter. And I guess uh, we use this one and we say we point towards this color. So that's pretty useful, the color sensor also, I guess, um, knows how to talk to the, uh, to the actuators and do the pointing operation. And so we point and we go and that should be it. Yeah. Pretty good for a beginner, but it might have been beginner's luck. Remember, I've got my eye on you. <laughs> um, she's definitely the best character of the bunch. Um, let's see. Smoking! Yo, that was fat. I'm Carl, and here's your mission brief. Make your robot return home after it's touched the flag. I think you'll need two states for this program. One to get to the flag, and one to get back. I'll see you soon. All right, so we're already learning the concept of uh, different states that the program can be, uh, be in. So we'll be having a stateful program. We get these two sensors. And uh, yeah, let's just scope out our environment. Okay, so the flag is still yellow and our beginner's um, uh, thing is uh, is purple. What do you call that? Um, so we start, oh, so, oh yeah, and then it says here, the task switcher is always attached to your robot. Double click for more information. Let's do that. Right, so this is how, how we handle state, right? We can switch between different tasks. And so we'll have our task, uh, to flag, and I guess we'll have our task uh, to base. And maybe a little confusingly, I think this is, you know, a little bit coincidence, or like they, they pick those colors to kind of match, but they're not necessarily related, like that this one is yellow and this one is um, purple, just like the colors that we actually have to associate them with. But in any case, let's do this and We'll point to the flag, and then we go. Um, oh wait, I already did that. Oh wait, new instruction, this is how we do it. Go. And then at some point we have to switch. So I can do this, I guess. And then we'll have to switch to base. I think if we just do this, it will just immediately switch. Um, so I think we can put this on the left hand side. Yeah, and so this is, okay, so in this case we want, I guess, the, the yellow, um, or the, um, yeah, the yellow one on the left hand side. So when we touch it, then we do this. So this is a if, if then statement. So then when we go here, we uh, want to point at this one. And then we want to go. So let's see how we do. Yeah. You did an excellent job. I hope you make it into the club. We could use some new brands around here. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, there's just one thing I want to try out. I think this is what I did originally. And this is, uh, by the way, the last level that I actually did before recording this video. Um, so what if we just don't do this thing? What if we get rid of this? Can I press the delete button? I actually don't know how I get rid of this. Oh, I double click. So much double clicking, we, we're not so used to that anymore. Uh, 
nowadays. So what if instead uh, of uh, switching uh, our tasks here, we just actually point to this one? Why don't we just do it like that? So that's what I originally tried, uh, but it doesn't work. So it, it just misses it. And I think um, starting a new task kind of implies that um, like uh, the actuators, the threads, are, uh, are being stopped. So that's kind of a side effect of uh, switching a task, just to get real nerdy about it. Okay. Before we continue, can we just appreciate sort of the UI of this? You know, we have a little notebook, but then we have sort of components here. Um, if I close the game and go back here, you know, we have like a little circuit board and these are resistors, I think, right? And then here, you know, we have like this little metal thing. I don't know. I just love it. Uh, it's all very simple. Let's do this one. There you are. My name is Andrea. In this mission, you have to build a <laughs> robot sucks. that collects a bunch of balls and brings them back. You're doing great, but remember, the robot club's a secret. The last thing we want is some authority figure checking us out. Catch you in a few. Catch you in a few. All right, so we have to get the robots to pick up any tennis balls lying around outside the court. Uh, court. We get a reward when we turn them in. Okay, so you know we are doing some fundraising here. Let's actually run the program and kind of see. Okay, so there's like random tennis balls. We have to collect them, I guess. Cool, so we have a little scoop that we can put on our robot. I don't know what this question mark... Oh yeah, that's right. forgot about this. We can have an icon for a robot. Um, I think this mostly comes into play when we um, uh, go into the dueling uh, mode. Uh, where you can have robots fight each other. It's kind of like a battle bots thing. All right, so let's uh, let's try to see what uh, functions we have. So if we new, do a new instruction, how does this one work? Okay, so we can pick up and dump. Um, can I also use it on the left side? No. So I guess really only the sensors go here. Um, so this says touch, not touch, of, or, or none. Um, not entirely sure what what the difference is between not touch and none. Um, yes, these are the same, of course. And then here, yeah, we can only really put this here. So I guess that uh, um, we just have to go. Um, and of course, before we do that, we have to point. Oh, we can even point away. Interesting. So we're getting more instructions already. That's fun. Uh, but we can point towards... Um, yellow because our tennis balls are yellow can i okay so i can't drag it but i can cut this and paste this afterwards okay so that's what i want um so but this will only pick up one um tennis ball i guess so what i'm imagining is that if we touch one we have to basically just do the same task again right so if i do this can i just say like run the same thing again i guess so let's see uh, how this does Oh, we forgot to actually scoop them up. Okay, this is great. Um, so I guess first of all, when we touch them, we have to scoop, pick up, and then I'll put this one at the end here. Um, I hope that it will let me do that. This is hopefully sort of an atomic action. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, and we just kind of accidentally went back. Uh, that doesn't really Good count. Work. Keep it up and maybe we'll trade some tunes. Okay, okay, let's run it again because I think... Okay, so we actually have to... Okay, so we by chance do that, but let's do properly do it uh, uh, with a second task that is like uh, go home. So if I do go home... We basically want to go to the point to the purple and then from there we can drive and so I guess that um, we'll have a thing that basically says um, if there are no more f uh, oh none that is what none means there are like none left 
Uh, we can't. We cannot see any yellow in the world. Now it makes sense. Okay. So then we want to go home. Okay. So this should be a bit more efficient. And so I guess it's also interesting sort of how this uh, thing works, right? It's um, um, these are all if statements. So I guess they kind of like all ru run in parallel and they kind of keep running to some degree. Um, is that the right way to think about it? We'll see. Yeah. I guess so. Cool. Good work. Keep it up. Okay, we already saw that one. Let's go to the next. Whoa, there you are. Greetings, Robo-san. <laughs> I am Master Woody. The search for robo-knowledge is really a search for self-knowledge. And the search for self-knowledge is really a search for inner knowledge. And the search for inner knowledge should be a lot of fun, man. Yo, here's the lesson between you and me. Some robot builders have gone over the dark side. So what you must do is program a robot to avoid enemies and other hazards. This time, when you send your robot to the flag, it's going to encounter some resistance. Just relax and think like a robot. But on! <laughs> I mean, he has a point, you know, whenever we're building robots or any kind of artificial intelligence, we're learning about ourselves because we're trying to build machines that are kind of modeled after ourselves, right? Like a human could uh, do a task like this easily. Um, and so, um, yeah, and we're already getting to the point of ethics, right? Like there's other uh, robots out there that are evil. And there are people who are building them that, you know, must be stopped. So, compelling stuff. Um, Alright, so let's see. We have a text sensor. It says double click for more info down there. It detects high-tech objects like mechanical devices and other robots. Okay. Can even see how far away it is. And we can uh, use actions. Oh, look at this. It even says... These are the messages. Okay, so those are... Uh, so they really termed it sort of in... Uh, uh, um, using terminology from like event-based systems, right? So it's not really an if-then, but it's like when we receive a message, we take this action. So that's uh, that kind of resolves what we were uh, just saying earlier. Um, and here we have the backup action. That's also interesting. But this one, yeah, we already saw these. Oh, so here we have a different one now. We have touch and near. Um, whereas earlier we also had the non-message, but I guess for all these exercises they're kind of um, simplifying a little bit the ones that you can use. And then we have a new one here, which is a horn. Makes a loud honk, you can use it to scare away enemy robots. I mean that might be a little bit uh, anthropomorphizing the other robots, I don't know if they all have sound sensors installed. Um, but you know, like there, there's some uh, human computer interface uh, considerations here, in letting other people know. Um, and I guess it doesn't really matter. So if like if they're on the top or the bottom, um, they can all have like messages and actions, and it's not really restricted either way. So I guess we have to get to the flag uh, while avoiding the other robot. Uh, let's just call this start. Uh, yeah. So how are we going to do that? Well, what did this have again? Oh yeah, point and point away. Okay, so we kind of want to point away from uh, from the other robot, I guess. But if we just do that, we'll never get anywhere near. So what if we just uh, not do this? And we'll just, you know, sound our horn whenever the other robot gets close. So I guess our flag is the first thing that we have to do. We just have to kind of like point at the flag. We have to go for it. So these are unconditional, right? Like... Even without any messages, we'll do them. And then if we get close, yeah, so near is really, then we'll uh, just sound our horn and hopefully they'll go out of the way. But if they're malicious, they might, uh, they might not be interested in moving out of the way. So let's see. Oh, and we still also had to get back. Okay, I mean, it's pretty good at scaring off the I don't mean to be rude, but I'm meditating. And hey, you're good. <laughs> that, uh, I 
don't know how I was being rude. Oh, I guess because I was using the horn. Okay, that's kind of funny. I mean, these cutscenes are, you know, it's all really cute, right? It's, uh, it's, it's all so cheesy, but, uh... But funny. There have been reports from here and here and... Back already? Wow! Well then, here's your last training mission. Your robot must go to three flags of different colors and avoid an enemy robot. Try programming with a global state. I'll see you when you're done. Hmm. So she mentions uh, the global state, which uh, I saw a checkbox for, uh, but haven't tried it yet. So let's see what did they say here. Try making a global task to decide when to play the horn. The global instructions, uh, the instructions in the global task are always used, no matter what the color of the current task. It's very interesting, so we're kind of um, getting into uh, multi-threading, right? Like we can have a task, which is the global task that always runs, and then sort of, you know, the, the, the state machine between the different states um, that the robot can be in. Okay, great, so we have lots and lots of things. Let's uh, look at the environment. Okay, so three flags of different colors and just tons and tons of other robots that are guarding them. Okay, so we just want to uh, scoot them out of the way with the global task like they said. And we want to, I guess, just uh, have a state machine where we visit all the different tasks, uh, all the different flags one by one. And then I guess finally we have to go home again. I forgot that in the previous one, but um, yeah, I guess the purple one is for the home base, which uh, is sitting underneath uh, our robot. So yeah, I guess we can just kind of like go like this, one, two, three, four, and then we'll have a global one. Uh, honk. Okay, and so I guess with these ones we can just, um, well it's, yeah, the colors don't really line up very well. Uh, I'll just call this yellow, and then here at the end we want to go home. And what are the other ones? We have orange and uh, blue. Okay, so that's a scaffold for our program. So um, here we'll do basically what she told us. And then here we want to uh, point at this thing. And go. And then when we touch it, we want to go to the orange flag, which is uh, the purple task. And then here we'll do the same thing. And when we touch that one, we want to go to the blue task, uh, which also happens to be light blue here. And then here, we want to point at the blue flag. Um, oh shoot, now I forgot. Let's just look at this real quick. Uh, yeah, okay, so the purple was, was home. Okay, so... Um, and then we go. And then when we hit this one... We uh, go to the home task. I guess we're done. This is the green task. Uh, and here, yeah, we just point at purple one and then we go and the global honking is uh, running all the time so that should uh, steer them away from us yeah that wasn't that hard that was fun congratulations though. you've mastered robot building 101 now it's time for your first real challenge we're ready when you are <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with that? Okay, so we have uh, one real task ahead of us. Let's go. Huh. Now let's tackle some real problems. Yeah, no more kid stuff. We want you to get some robot parts from Ami Science. You have nothing to fear but total failure and the Ami Science security guards. She's kidding. OmniScience puts the used parts in a scrap bin! We retrieve them with special robots. And now you're going to build one. Yeah, right. 
Okay, so she is still skeptical. But uh, yeah, we have to go to OmniScience, where apparently my parents work, because everyone works there in this town. So, what do they say? Uh, they just throw their old hardware into a big tank. Pick up all the pieces of useless scrap you can find, but watch out for the puddles of acid. Oh dear. If you run over too many of them, your bot will be destroyed. Alright, so we have a concept of health now. So let's, uh, oh man, this is a bunch of different things. What is this? Okay, so there are different kind of wheels. Energy intensive way. They have a liquid sensor. So that is for the asset, I guess. Uh, and we can point and see if we're near. <laughs> and we have a turbo thruster. I mean, isn't this just lovely, right? You just... <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you're tweaking your car or something. Adding in some turbo. Don't leave it on too long, though, because then we're running out of battery, right? Okay, so that's an important consideration. And then we have uh, our old treads. Oh, and we are actually getting some, uh, some additional actions from this one, where we can uh, make, uh, make 90 degree turns. That is pretty dope. And then we already had this one. So I guess that is how we discover the useful things. Can we use multiple of them? I guess so. Mm. But wait a minute, this is too much, right? We can't use them all. <laughs> um, yeah, why not use this slightly? Let's get rid of the slow beans. And we'll do it kind of like this, right? And then, doesn't that look cool? Alright. Um, so yeah, let's just look at it real quick. Oh yeah, okay. And then do we have to get back at the end again? We'll, we'll see. Okay. We'll call the start. And uh, I guess we'll have to point at pieces of metal. Um, great. And then we go with this thing. And then when we hit the metal, that is good. We want to do this task again, again, uh, I guess. And then also, we have to use this thing to avoid those things. So if we're, uh, can we actually just, yeah, so if we say if we're near, can we just say we want to kind of like point away from them? And maybe that should be sufficient, right? Like, and then we go away and then, well, but then the problem is, I guess, that we don't, um, we don't point towards it again. So we'll just go away, uh, point away, and then that is that. So maybe we actually need a new task and say, uh, point away. So if we do this and we point away for a bit, can we then say that we're not near anymore? Um, okay, so not touch is not that great. Um, that's not really what we want. Um, what if we just do this and then we go back to the other... Do we have a timer or something where we can say, you know, after one second of pointing away... Um, that would be nice. What do we have here? Yeah, these are just these simple things. This is just go... Um, yeah, okay, so what if we just throw on our booster real quick and then switch back to the original task again? Like, maybe there's like a little bit of enough of a delay that we can get away with doing this. So I guess in this case we'll do the point away task. Let's see how well this performs. Or if I'm missing something here. Whew. Oh, we have to actually scoop them up. Oh dear. Oh, and we're dead. Okay, so we're still hitting some acid here and there, but I think that if we would have done the scooping, we would have been pretty good, good actually. So, with this touching, we want to do the scooping, and then we want to do this task again. So I guess we can't express that without creating a new task, so we say scoop. So here, we'll do the scooping. 
and then we'll go back to our original task. Um, like that. Okay, let's see how this does. Oh man, see this is harder than you think. Okay, so <laughs> this boost <laughs> when you're sort of like precariously trying to navigate this stuff is not a great idea. And I feel like we're actually a little bit too fast, right? Like we're just like scooting through everything like crazy. So let's go back and like, I don't think we want any of these. Uh, yes, that sounds good. Uh, I want to keep that one. And then let's add this one there. Okay. So I guess uh, we'll just go slow. This is interesting. Turn left is maybe, uh, it's probably not what we want in this case, but it's interesting that we can do that. Um, so let's see, what did we have? So if we're near something, we want to uh, point away. And if we touch one of these, then we want to uh, go to the scoop task. Oops. Uh, and I don't know why I put this here. Uh, we want to go to uh, go to the parts that we're interested in. And then in our oh shoot, I was doing all this in the point away. Oh sorry, that's not good. Okay, we also have to fix that. Okay, so we, that's why we had this here. Um, so here we point away and then we go and that's and then yeah we go back to the original task that's what we did and we don't need this i totally missed that uh we can just uh this entire instruction and then here we just have to add one with the threads to just go uh, and then it's very annoying that i can't drag them but i guess i'll just do this Um, that looks pretty good to me. And then in the scoop, this is still the same. Okay, so with everything being a little bit slower, um, hopefully this is good. Yeah, look at that, much more. Oh! Alright, we're, <laughs> we're almost dead, but I think we made it. Wow! I wonder what this baby does. Did you notice your robot knocked something over? What was that green stuff? It's probably it's the start of some environmental disaster. Maybe we should build a robot janitor to clean it up. Omni Science will take care of it. In any case, the toughest challenges for you are still ahead. Yeah. All right, that was the first chapter. Um. That was pretty fun, you know, it's like a good introduction to things. I mean, I'm, I'm like a little bit dissatisfied with uh, how how we, you know, almost didn't get there. So maybe we can make this like a little bit better. Let's let's try that. So let's, uh, let's say that we make this thing back up a little bit. And what actually happens if we're trying to kind of like do a couple of things in sequence here. Uh, so I guess we want to back up a little bit first. And then we want to point away. Um, and then we can go to... Yeah, is there sort of like an inherent like slight delay between these or something? No, I don't remember. Um, it would be nice if there's uh, some sort of timer or something. Can we do this here? No. I can't really use that. And we couldn't say that we're... Yeah, okay. Um... I mean, maybe we can say as long as we're near, we're going to keep pointing away. Would that be useful? Um, so something like, you know, we keep keep sort of doing this. I mean, I, I don't know if that would be useful uh, because we'll al already be switching away. Okay, let's just uh, see see if this slightly different thing works a little bit better. Oh, that's funny. It can't really get anywhere this way. Okay, so I guess we'll just point away and just accept our, the fact that it's not going to be perfect. Whoa, I mean, that's pretty bad. Okay, so maybe we have to do a different, um, so I guess if we're near, 
we're trying to just uh well we have to go to the point away task um because otherwise we're not going to point to it again um but then i guess we can also say that if we're actually touching it I mean, maybe touching is, is sort of like a better proxy for all of this stuff. Um, so if we're touching it, we kind of want to want to back up a little bit, actually, and then sort of like try a different route. Um, OK, let's see if we can tweak it a little bit. So let's just back up a little bit here. And then also turn it a little bit. So I guess we can say something like turn left. Um, yeah, we still have sort of like the timing issue, I guess. Um, what, is the, what do we have here again? Yeah, that's not really that useful. Uh, we don't have messages here. Did we get, yeah, we didn't get any messages from these. Yeah, I guess the approach here is just to kind of like <laughs> power through those puddles. I mean, maybe that's not a bad idea, right? Like, what if we just power through them? Um, kind of like that idea. It's like, let's just not spend too much time in those places. So this only has go. It's just a, a, a quick burst. So yeah, when we touch one of them, we want to just do a big burst and just power through it. Um, that's a very different approach, but maybe it's better. Okay, so this is just some unused code now. We'll just leave it for now. I mean, that was not bad, honestly. <laughs> wow. Okay, great. I wonder what this baby does. Okay, so here we have the second chapter, uh, but I'll take a little break and uh, see you soon. Let's just stop there, because this video is getting pretty long already. I'll record the other chapters in separate videos. But yeah, so far I think it's pretty good. The cutscenes are goofy and fun, and they really liven it up. Um, I would have wished that I found a secret robot club in the basement of my school, you know. Uh, my 10-year-old brain would have been blown if he had known that now I'd be working on robots for a living. Um, so yeah, that, that was good. And I also liked that the programming model is pretty realistic. Already we've learned about sensors and actuators, uh, about task switching and multi-threading. And I like that the simulations are actually quite unforgiving. Uh, it makes it feel like you're really doing something real, uh, that it's not some educational environment in which nothing can go wrong. And we even learned a little bit about morality, right? That we can build technology for, for good and for evil. Um, and then, then there's a deeper thing. Uh, the Robots Club kind of follows in a long tradition of teaching programming and math using robots. Right, like the, the pioneer of this was uh, Seymour Papert back in the 60s and 70s. And he used these physical robots called turtles, um, which kids could program. And they often had a pen in the middle so that you could draw shapes on paper by having them drive around. And he wrote this famous book uh, called Mindstorms about this. And there's a lot of good stuff in it, but one of the main ideas is that you can really relate to the robot. You can imagine it moving around, just like you can imagine uh, your your own body moving around. So you can sort of feel feel the robot's movements. Um, and um, out of this also grew the, the logo programming language, which would use a simulated robot uh, to draw shapes. So check this out. This is what you can do with that. And then a little while later, Lego actually uh, recognized the potential of these ideas and they developed the Lego Mindstorms uh, robot kits. Um, so, you know, uh, in collaboration with uh, Seymour Papert. And these robot kits have been hugely successful and popular in part because it doesn't feel like learning, right? It, it feels like playing, you're playing with Legos and 
yet you're learning how to program and how to build, how to do mechanical engineering, all these things. And so I feel like the Robot Club is, is kind of similar. It's, it's a game, but, it's, uh, but you're learning so much uh, through playing. So, all right, let's, uh, let's just keep it at that. I can't wait to play the rest of this. So I'll, I'll see you soon.